So our first travel day takes us to Jordan Lake State Park, which is about 20 miles west of Raleigh, North Carolina. And it's not every day you go to a state park and see military transport vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Sandy. And I'm Ed. And this is General, the totally awesome water dog. We hope you'll join us on our journey of discovery. The, the next, next adventure, adventure is just over, over the, the hills. hills. So some thoughts on uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, Raleigh is uh, the state capital uh, for North Carolina. And it was founded in 1792. And it was named after the English explorer, Sir Walter Raleigh. Sir Walter Raleigh was beheaded in 1618. Also, when the dude was beheaded, they preserved his head, and then they later presented it to Lady Raleigh. In other words, they gave his, the wife, here's your husband's head. I mean, what did she, oh, thank you so much. I, I really, I know exactly where I'm going to put this. Man, times were strange back then. So one of the quirky little things about Raleigh uh, is that um, there was a tavern that sprung up, a place called Isaac Hunter's Tavern. So they're going to have the 1788 Constitutional Convention, and they're going to have it someplace in, in North Carolina, and they say, well, we're going to have it at the new state capitol, so you can imagine all these politicians. And why are they going to have this meeting as Isaac Hunter's Tavern? Because that's a place where you could get food and good drink. It had a great reputation for good food and good drink, but not just good, safe, because they did crazy things like they boiled the water and they, they had the best preservation. They had um, cellars where uh, they had the best storage so it was a good place to go where you could eat healthy uh, without worrying about getting sick and so that's where all these politicians said well that's where we're going to go well during this convention as they're going about their banner one of the things that they concluded they made, passed a law where it was mandated that the new state capital of Raleigh would be built no more than 10 miles away in any given direction from the tavern. Now, that is the kind of American ancestors that we have. Think about that. These guys are gold. We decided to do some exploring today. So we are at Yates Mill County Historical Park. Um, this is the pond, I guess, that helps run the mill. Pretty nice area out here. No pets allowed though, so we had to leave General in the car. Water comes in to the wheel. And there's the wheel down there. We're going to have to go over on these rocks. We got a couple of the old wheels as the steps. Today, we decided to take a look at Bennett Place, which is close to Durham. It's right out, outside of Durham. They have a lot of historic buildings here. Um, this is a Civil War era. Bennett Place was the place where General Johnston 
surrendered his troops to the Union Army, um, which ap actually happened after Robert E. Lee surrender surrendered at Appomattox. So this is the Bennett House with General in the foreground. Pets are allowed to walk around on the property. They just can't go inside the buildings. Um, it says, although efforts were made to preserve the Bennett House, a mysterious fire destroyed the house in 1921. The house that stands today is an original house built circa 1840 that belonged to the Proctor family who lived about four miles from the Bennett farm. In 1960, the house was moved and placed on the original foundation of the Bennett House site. Through slight modifications, the house was restored to resemble an almost exact duplicate of the original Bennett House. The rock chimney is the only surviving artifact of this prominent historic landmark. A plaque on its wall tells its incredible story. There's some nice furniture inside the house. There's a bedroom. And here's inside the kitchen house. It says, this kitchen house was also reconstructed from original materials from the Proctor farm site. On many small farms and large plantations, the kitchen was separate from the main house due to frequent fires and the intense heat from the constant cooking. The kitchen primarily provided an expanded workplace for preparing meals and performing other chores. And James, Nancy, and Eliza Bennett retired to the kitchen when Johnston and Sherman arrived for their meetings. You mean I should talk about the fire? Mm-hmm. Well, it's our first camping experience, our first stop, and this is, I've not built a campfire and I don't know when, and so I spent $5 on wood just to burn it so I can build me a fire because you need to build a fire when you're camping. <laughs> Nick from Sanford, North Carolina put some real imagination into his RV. Take a look at this. It's an M109 built in 1966 with mostly original equipment. He's working on the transformation to an RV and already has installed AC, a sofa pullout bed, recliner, and a mini fridge. Nick and his girlfriend and their spaniel dog Sammy camp locally. Although still young, Nick has done extensive traveling throughout the U.S., including Alaska and Canada over the last several years. He would very much like to travel extensively again, so don't be surprised if you see this really unique RV show up at a campground near you. This was our old spot. Um, we got a lot of rain here over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And on Sunday, we realized that we needed to dump our black tank. So we packed everything up and went up to the gate to empty the black tank. And when we came back around the loop, we figured now would be a good time to probably move um, since this got all muddy from the rain. So we moved across the street. We're now over here. And this used to have water down over the gully there, but they've been letting out the water in the lake. Um, so it's dry back there now. 
but we have a level patio, which we actually like better. Um, so we can sit under our awning. So there's our patio. So we like this a lot better over here with it being level. I do like the level. <laughs> this is the TV out of our bedroom, out of our 2012 Keystone trailer. Um, hung right in the way, I would always kind of scrape my back over it as I was going to bed. And uh, I was going to be doing some work outside and this morning and I was inside to get some sweet tea and I heard pow and I went back to see what was going on my wife was holding her head so well this thing just had to come down and when I was taking it down there was um, a military transport vehicle that a man had transformed into an RV down at the end creative fellow so I thought maybe this dude can use that yeah, flat screen in it. So now I've got this TV. Well, what am I going to do with it? I mean, it's a perfectly good working TV. And it's one of the 12 volt TVs. So a clever fella could, um, you got your step down here, you could wire it up for 12 volt DC. All you'd have to do is just make sure you have the amps. Anyway, well, Am I going to just throw it away? Good Lord, I hate to throw away a perfectly good working TV. Or am I going to hang it up? What? And then go tell my wife that, well, I'm sorry you banged your head off of this thing, but, you know, I just can't bear to throw this away because I have the prospect of making maybe 10, 15 bucks off this thing. I think I'll just hang it up here again and you watch out. <laughs> I can't do that either. So, and I just don't want to throw it in the trash. It's got to have some kind of recycle thing. So off into the basement it goes. Sort of like our coffin before it goes someplace else. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. Alright, son. Here you go. Here's your new home for a bit. Maybe over the course of the week, while we're still here, we can find somebody that is just dying to have a 2012 Jensen 12 volt TV out of my RV. You never know. Perfect! <laughs> <coughs> You know, this is working just like I planned. <laughs> uh, well, I could put it up in there, but that's a dark and scary place next to the ladder for a TV. If you have any comments and suggestions of what I should do with this TV, and please keep it nice, <laughs> go ahead and drop me a line. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about an albatross around your neck. <laughs> and there's zero room in the truck. Mm -hmm. In the basement, too. <laughs> Did I say zero room? I meant zero room. A zero room. Did I say zero room? <laughs> <laughs> It's going in face down. Lord dressed its soul. It's <laughs> just a little something we found on the side of the road. This road goes up to Durham. Yes. And this is totally awesome. It is. A lot of traffic on this road. We had a hard time pulling over. This is just a totally awesome building.
but there is a spot right across the street from us that we were able to, or from it, that we were able to pull off to the side of the road. Pretty cool. And now for something completely different. <laughs> well, I should have been editing my photos on my computer, but uh, I put the TV antenna up and productivity went right out the window like a poorly installed air conditioner. Three's Company came on, and not that that old sitcom is much to me, but I saw a guy in it, a man. I knew the man well. Well, not well. I mean, not personally. <laughs> All right. Now, a lot of y'all out there might remember Dick Sargent as uh, the second Darren on Bewitched. But uh, he did a lot of other stuff. And check this out. I mean, it's amazing. So, Dick Sargent, on television series, he was in, or appeared in, the following. We got Navy Log, West Point Story, Ripcord, The Rat Patrol, I Dream of Jeannie, Hazel, Three's Company, The Waltons, Charlie's Angels, Knott's Landing, Family Ties, The Love Boat, Fantasy Island, uh, Adam 12, The Streets of San Francisco, Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law, Ellery Queen, the Tony Randall Show, The Devlin Connection, Beretta, Switch, The Six Million Dollar Man, Marcus Welby, M.D., Trapper John, M.D., Matt Houston, Alice, Taxi, Benson, Vegas, Different Strokes, Here's Lucy, Love American Style, The Yellow Rose, The Commish, Murder, She Wrote, and L.A. Law. Whew! With all that, you would think the man's name would be like Dick Lieutenant or Dick Captain, not just Sergeant. I mean, that was impressive to me. So that's my tangent for this week.